Hello and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative. Today I am bringing back this Briar My Dream Horse kit that I, uh, last year I showed you how much of a utter crap kit this is in terms of the supplies that they give you and I said I was gonna go ahead and actually complete them with my own supplies and then you haven't seen this in like a year. So today I am here to paint one of them finally. If you have been eagle-eyed in my intros, you may have already seen him on the shelf painted. You're gonna see me painting him now. Here's that stallion and I'm gonna go ahead and mix some apple barrel acrylic paints. These are just your basic craft paints that you can get on Amazon. You can buy them individually or in two different sets. Not sponsored, just explaining what I'm using. I have set one. Haven't had to uh, replace any colors yet. Haven't added any colors yet. I'm just working with set one. Just so everybody knows what we're working with. I ended up doing four or five coats of paint for the base color. You're going to see me do the first coat and then the touch-up coat and then we'll get into the other details, but just so you know, it took four or five until I had a what I was satisfied with as a good, solid, even smooth color that didn't have brush strokes, didn't have lighter and darker patches, and yeah. I, I am happy with how this paint went onto the horse, and unlike the paint that came in the kit, as you saw or will see, I will link that video up above, uh, the acrylics that came with this kit, when I painted it onto the foal, I tested on the foal, I, my fingers were a little bit wet and all of the paint just rubbed right off after it was dry. And it's that's not happening with the apple barrel paints, so it's not a problem with the models themselves. Which I knew it wouldn't be because these are this they're made out of the same material that all Briar models are. As I mentioned in the first video, typically Briar models are uh, airbrush painted, so they get a lot of very fine details, a lot of blending, a lot of fades that you're really not going to achieve in any reasonable amount of time with crappy little craft brushes and very cheap acrylic craft paints. I am sure somebody out there has done it. I don't have the patience for that. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> so I decided that this guy should be a flaxen chestnut. For those who aren't familiar with horse colors, chestnut is one of the many terms for a red base coat. Genetically, horses are either a black or a red base, and flaxen means that the mane and tail, the horse's hair, so to speak, is a paler shade than the body. In some breeds that gets a little bit confused, but yeah. Chestnut's the general term. Flaxen means the mane and tail are lighter, but it's not Palomino, don't get that confused. <laughs> Liver chestnut definitely, er, typically means a darker chestnut. Lots of different terms. Sorrel is just a equivalent alternate term in the stock horse, quarter horse world. Why am I rambling? <laughs> So here he is with that base coat finished, and as you can see, since Briar models are so beautifully carved, beautifully detailed, just the light hitting the model is already creating a lot of the shadows and detail that you want to see. So I don't really feel like I'm losing much by not trying to go in and put shadows in. I'm just going with the white pure white and uh, putting in white markings on this horse. I do want him to be considered a solid color white, so I'm not taking the white up above the knees and hocks. If it went up above the knees and hocks, it would be some sort of 
patterned, be it a Sabino, be it a Splash, maybe even a Dominant White. Who knows? I wanted it to be solid, so I kept it below the knees and hocks. Well, up to the knees and hocks, basically, but they're still just socks. <laughs> and of course, we gotta do a nice blaze and star snip, whatever. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And then going in with gray, I believe I used the pewter gray in the set, didn't mix a gray. For the hooves, you could mix a different gray if you wanted to. You could decide that he has pale hooves and mix a nice little peach color. If you wanted to get really crazy, you could easily put the banding on the hooves as well. Because some horses have that. Some horses just have to be extra. <laughs> By the way, if you're new here, please do subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. I upload every Tuesday and Thursday at minimum. Sometimes I have bonus videos. I'm an art channel, but I also do crafts, tutorials, and related product reviews on occasion. And I am going to be painting the mare and the foal that came in this set as well in the near future. I'm not going to let it go another year before I add another installment to this series. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit like and leave a comment down below. Tell me if you've ever tried any of the Briar painting kits, or if you've ever customized a fine detailed horse model like this, be it Briar or Peter Reeves or any of those brands. I'd love to know. And uh, do you have any, like, Horsey people out there, do you have any requests for the colors of the mare and foal? Keep in mind, this is meant to be a family set, so whatever color you suggest for the mare, then keep that in mind that she bred with a chestnut for the foal. Because, <laughs> yeah, I, I am a horse nerd, and I like to study the genetics of horse colors, so I'm doing the foal last so that he's realistic to the mare and stallion. <laughs> this uh, flaxen color that I made for the mane and tail, I mixed several colors together and I just, it took so much to get the right shade that I ended up with way too much paint. I couldn't just leave it in the palette and let it dry, so that's why you see me using it out of a little, tiny little salad dressing container. <laughs> Because I figured, you know, why not? I'll save it. I'll probably use it some other time. <laughs> it was hard to get the ends of his tail, the ends of the little pieces of his mane, without getting that color onto his darker body. <laughs> and I, I hope I did a good job there. Uh, nobody's looking too closely. <laughs> And then I decided I was going to try and use my ball stylus to do the eyes, just to be careful, but for the whites of the eyes it was tedious, you'll see me do on the other side just a regular small brush. There we go. <laughs> And then I wanted to be rather realistic with this, so I am using a dark brown to make his irises before I then go in with the black and put a pupil in. And I think his eyes turned out really well. He doesn't look cross-eyed when he's looking straight at you. <laughs> Here he is, my finished stallion from the kit, horse one of three. And like I said, leave a comment down below, tell me what colors you want to see me do on the other two. Tell me if you've ever tried a kit like this or redone any of these type of models before. Love to hear from you, and I will be back on Friday with another video. Sorry, Thursday. I will be back on Thursday. <laughs> Bye, guys.